Sit. Good boy. What's up guys, welcome back. And if you're new, check out the rest of the channel, especially if you like dogs, especially if you like Shibas. I have a lot of great content, but for today, we are gonna be talking about four reasons why you should not get a Shiba Inu. Featuring the star of the show, Tori, Taurus the Shiba. Tori, say hi. Tori hates me. Also a disclaimer, I'm not trying to bash the breed, so before you guys downvote me into oblivion, just know, clearly I love Shibas. I this is meant for informational purposes for people just to know this breed does not do well with a lot of different lifestyles and uh, personalities. So if you can't handle four things listed, then this video is for you. So without further ado, let's dive in. You ready, Tori? Number one, stubbornness. Do not overlook this one at all. I feel like a lot of people can be like, oh, it's all right, I can tolerate it, but do not overlook this. When people say they are stubborn, they are stubborn. So to put this into perspective, think of situations where you might have to quickly go somewhere, like if you're running from your car to your apartment and it's raining or something like that, and they're just, they're not, you know, cooperating and they're, you know, that's one thing they do a lot is like, if they don't want to walk, they will start pulling back on the leash and stand still. They will literally become luggage and you have to drag them. Or situations where it could be dangerous and you don't want them to cross the street, or if they're running away from you, which they do escape a lot, they're really good at escaping too and you want them to come back to you and they don't listen. Those are things that can aggravate you a lot and make you almost regret, like, you know, thinking you can handle the stubbornness. Like, in the beginning for me, I was thinking to myself, damn, I should have listened to people when they said this dog is really stubborn and hard to train. It's not that they're hard to train, actually. It's that they're stubborn and they're really smart. So if it's not in their best interest, they're not going to listen to you. So there was really times where I was fed up when I wanted to just go on a walk, like around the lake, and Toy would not walk, and if I kept pulling her, she would start screaming. So it takes a lot of, lot of time to invest in the training. So if you're a person who does not have a lot of patience, and I emphasize a lot of patience, this might not be the dog breed for you because even till today, Tori is still pretty stubborn. But she's nine months and we're working on things. She's getting a little bit better, but definitely requires a lot of patience. So that's, I think, one thing that I say, you know, if you're a first time dog owner, probably don't get a Shiba. A lot of people, I feel like, expect the dogs to kind of just like to listen to you, kind of like uh, border collies and stuff like that, but Shiba, not the case. Number two, minimal affection. I know that sounds kind of weird. You know, why is that a big thing? This one kind of varies because I've met some Shibas that are really cuddly, but I think for the most part, the stigma that they have is they're not affectionate. Tori here, more of on the spectrum of not affectionate. And I mentioned this because I feel like a lot of people, when they get a dog, one of the big reasons is because they kind of want to have a mutual bond, mutual love, especially being cuddly. Shibas are different. You know, Tori has not cuddled with me. I don't think ever. The most she's done is like lay at my feet. And it's kind of sad. It kind of sucks a little bit, but I, I've kind of gotten used to it. I do like my space in the bed anyways, but there are times where I've wanted to cuddle and she will get up and literally walk away If I even try to force any type of cuddles on it So yeah, they're not like the average dog like the golden retrievers and stuff like that where they like will come and lay on you They are very like cats where they like their own space and they kind of want to do their own thing So if you're looking for that super affectionate dog, she was might not be for you number three Shedding. I know this is a big, big thing people consider when they get dogs is how bad the shedding is. A lot of people like the hypoallergenic dogs. These dogs shed. So if you're thinking of wearing any dark colors and carrying them a lot, get ready for that to be all over you. I kind of got used to it. I actually just don't pick her up as much because I know that she sheds a lot, especially if I'm wearing dark clothes. So you really have to get ready to have a lot of dog hair around your place. My couch always has dog hair, so I'm constantly cleaning it. My floors, better get a Roomba or a really good vacuum. So just get ready for a lot of that shedding because I think they blow their coats about twice a year, but it's practically nonstop. Otherwise, one way you can kind of help with it is by uh, grooming them every day and using a good de-shedder. But at the same time, you know, make sure you have time to do that. If you don't want a dog that's gonna have a lot of dog hair or you have to keep up with that maintenance of the brushing and stuff like that, Sheba's you might have to pass on them as a breed, man. Number four, their scream. If you've never heard the Sheba scream, go to Google and type in Sheba scream um, and you'll see. It's very much like a human scream and if your neighbors hear it, they might think you're trying to murder your dog. It wouldn't be as bad if they didn't, if they weren't as dramatic, but these dogs are also known to be very dramatic. So Tori will scream for like a 
puddle or getting wet or a dog kind of like that she doesn't want to play with a lot of little things so that could be something you know that could annoy people really fast is hearing that scream because again it's it's very high pitched and it's blood curdling sometimes one time i accidentally stumped her toe and she would not stop screaming downstairs you know i tried to like comfort her and everything and all my neighbors came out of their apartment and were like what's going on don't think you can handle that scream where you're somebody that's easily annoyed by a dog even barking imagine a dog that barks and screams so that's one thing you should really really take into consideration um because if you can't they probably not the dog for you go get you a asenji barkless dog and they look kind of like shivas so if you made it this far in the video and found this very helpful please 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 consider subscribing tori's already sick of me right now as you can see this is finished, so now she wants to go. Like, there's no reason for her to be next to me anymore. But if you made it this far in the video, please, please, at least drop a like. It really helps as a creator. If you have any specific questions or comments or anything that I missed, please leave it in the comments. I'm really good with responding back, and I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible, but I guarantee you I will respond. But until next time, guys, peace, love, and positivity. We're out. Milo, 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 down, fucking way.